And I, I want to say all of that stuff because what I do see working really well is this fractional CMO thing. And one of the people that I know that has been most successful that happens to be on the stage here is Kelvin with fractional CMO and what you can do with it. So Kelvin, I would love for you to explain just sort of the fractional CMO business, how you're using it and what kind of stuff you've seen in the last three months, six months, a year, whatever, since, since you and I really started talking and, and, and what that's been able to do for you and what problems you're solving for folks and what that really looks like. Because I think there's so many people that are senior media buyers working 15 hours a day, six days a week, that this is actually the path for them to be way happier and way more successful. And businesses should hire them instead of an agency. Well, you know, ultimately a fractional CMO is um, comes to a company that isn't getting the results they need and focuses, zeroes in on um, what KPIs would be, uh, you know, you said something earlier, just to backtrack a little bit. You said something about, um, you know, people should focus on the business model. The truth is the business model is everything. And, you know, your business model includes, you know, what's your product, but your product is solving what problem and solving what problem for what customer segment and solving it for them. How, how is it going to differentiate against other people? And what channels is it going to use? That's the traffic, but that's a small portion of it. And uh, what's the cost structure to deliver this item and what revenue streams can be delivered and what are the existing alternatives that um, people can use to get this job to be done or solve this problem. But all of those items is like a dozen items. That's the business model and all those things have to hold together for the business to work. And so traffic is like one little problem out of like a dozen. And a fractional CMO, you know, will understand all of that. And so can come in and look at it uh, holistically and say, okay, well, you think this is your problem, but let me look at all these areas and maybe there's um, maybe there's a gap here or a gap there. I mean, the, uh, the best way to look at that, this is every item, you know, like a dozen items, every one of them is a risk factor. Um, you know, so you have an assumption that uh, I'm going to be able to sell X product for X price using X channel. And they're all assumptions. So which is the riskiest assumption? And then uh, a CMO or a CEO uh, will say, well, we got to solve the riskiest assumption first and then move on to the next riskiest assumption and so forth. So then usually with um, either starting businesses or existing businesses, but with a new product line, the riskiest assumption is, can I acquire a customer at a certain price, which will be lower than what it will cost me to acquire and fulfill that item? So the riskiest assumption initially is usually, can I acquire a customer at an acceptable KPI? And so as a fractional CMO, fractional because I'm not going to run all of their marketing for them in all channels offline and online and map out all their strategies for all their products and their whole business. Fractional means, you know, it'll, I'll look at a slice of it, the slice that they want me to look at initially, and then do that kind of lean canvas uh, overview of things, at least for myself, and then see what the problem is. And, you know, I might ask them, uh, you know, uh, what are your existing KPIs? So they'll tell me. And I'll say, uh, what, uh, uh, what, are, what, what are the problems you're having? And I already know the answer. The answer is usually they cannot acquire a customer at an acceptable price and they cannot do that consistently and predictably. And then, uh, you know, I'll ask them, what's your process? It's usually non existent or disjointed, uh, or it's a process that doesn't really make sense for the channels that they're using. For example, Facebook today is heavily driven by a machine learning uh, algorithm. And uh, five years ago, maybe not so much. So if they're using what worked five years ago, then they're using something that doesn't work. So what process they're using is very important. And 
then I generally just, uh, after I get answers to, you know, what KPIs do you need? What do you actually have? What's your process? Um, then I show them that I have a process. And, you know, as far as being in the fractional CMO business, it's all you need to do. Because uh, as I mentioned to you the other day, I, I have struggled to get anyone to say no, to hire me. <laughs> I mean, I literally cannot get anyone to say no. Um, I figured maybe asking for more would solve that problem, but so far it hasn't. <laughs> um, but so what does a fractional CMO do? Um, you know, thank you to you. Uh, I have something called a, uh, a process roadmap. Um, yeah, it is, you know, 90% uh, what I learned in the uh, MBA program, but also, you know, there's additional stuff. I mean, I've been in the business a long time. I've uh, been a copywriter. I've managed copywriters, managed creative people. I've also um, worked on this whole, uh, you know, validate your business model and uh, figure out your traction roadmap and your customer factory blueprint. Uh, what do you need to, what numbers do you need to achieve at what stage of the business? When you understand all of that, you understand where you're going, then as a fractional CMO, you can manage. You don't just like come in and say, I'm going to deliver X. You manage to get to that, the acceptable numbers. And so it's a process. And as you uh, see how big is the gap and what are the riskiest assumptions and, of course, the goal of any business or project or division within a business or project within a division is to achieve acceptable KPIs before they run out of resources, which is money yeah. or before the management says, you're done. Um, so... The process is to figure out what the gaps are and of course there has to be some insight some intuition you know into marketing what are we going to test in what order for example um, a couple of the new clients that i've been working with uh, were done with facebook they said we cannot yeah. achieve you know our we needed a lead at 25 dollars. we cannot achieve it we've tested hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of i think it was 800 and something different ads um, they could not achieve it. And my first uh, action item was I didn't write one new word of copy, not one new creative, just what they ex already had. Did an inventory, retested using, you know, Golden Bear, retested all the elements, ran it through Facebook's uh, dynamic creative test. And while I couldn't get to 25, is now 14. I love it. That's I love before it. I then introduced any new uh, new uh, creative uh, concepts to test. And uh, with another client, uh, they uh, had an agency with the most sophisticated, mind-blowingly sophisticated system and indecipherable naming convention. So ah. I had no idea. <laughs> no idea what they had actually done. Um but I started with uh, the same strategy and then, uh, you know, worked with the client to test a number of concepts. And the one that, you know, just from my intuition, and I know that we're all data driven, but from my intuition as a copywriter, the one that should have worked didn't work. So I, an old copywriter's trick, I went back to the, uh, you know, with Facebook, you have the primary text. And in this case, the primary text was a lot of copy. So I went back to the client and I said, let's cut off the first third of the copy in all these primary texts and the headline that won for this concept, rewrite, I think it was like a four or five versions, rewrite the primary text, just the intro to the primary text with something that centers on what the winning headline was. And voila, now it's working now. Uh, we're generating a result which is 60% better than the other agency did in over a year. I love it. I love it. And what I'm hearing more than anything here is, I mean, first off, thank you for the shout outs with the, with the MBA program and, and the golden bear testing model and all of this stuff. But, and, and that's what we teach in that is, is, is this system in the process. But what I love is you're taking these people that have basically given up that have gone to a million different solution providers and you're just installing a very systematic scientific method approach with some intuition based off of your experience because nobody can afford to scientifically test everything. 
and you're basically specifically attacking the solutions or the problems that are going to create the most, the highest confidence of change. And the net impact is, look, they couldn't get 25, now you're at 14. You made a 60% improvement on somebody else by literally just systematically working your way through all of it with system and process. And I think that that is something that so many people lack, you know, like, I can't tell you how many great media buyers I know and ask them, hey, like, do you, what's your system and process for doing something? Like, well, I try things out and let's see what works. It's like, okay, great. So you're not good at this job. Like you can execute, but you can't plan. And I feel like what you're saying more than anything, and I'd be interested, maybe I stepped over Barry's. I see him frivolously taking notes. Furiously, not frivolously, Man. sorry. Uh, not frivolously, furious. My, my, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're all stupid notes, Barry. Uh, is, is, is that that system and process is so vital. And, and one of the things that I love that you said, Kelvin, was you can't get anybody to say no. And what I'm assuming from that, just because we've known each other, is that interview process of when they're bringing you on board, you're just showing them the system and the process. Be like, this is how I work. I want to install you through this next three months, this next nine weeks, this next 12 weeks. Here's point A, here's point B. This is what we're going to do to get there. And because they've done so poorly, because people have been taking advantage of them, running things poorly until you got there, all you need to do is the bare minimum of executing with self-control and you're making tremendous change in these businesses. Is, is that a fair assessment? I mean, it's absolutely a fair assessment. Um, in talking to prospective clients, if you start with where they're at, that's the KPIs, and their process, so how did you end up with those KPIs, and what are your problems, which you already know the answer to, and then show a scientific, disciplined, step-by-step -step process that you will execute for them, they don't have to do anything. Um, they have significant confidence that this will do way better than anything they've done before, and then as it turns out, it does. There so you go. they're happy about that as well. <laughs>